President. Hello. Hi, Dick. President, how are you? Fine. I, I uh, thought I was going to hear from you, and I... I was going to call you yesterday, and then I thought I'd call you Monday. Good. Uh, I, I think that uh, maybe your idea that you had last week was a good one. Yeah. And uh, the only thing on the approach of it, I had a chance to talk a little bit, but not too much uh, Wednesday night. And, of course, I kept saying what we all know, that after all, this is a selection that made by the president. And when the time comes, he'll make the selection. And then I, uh, you know, suggested some conversation with you. And I, I think, uh, as you mentioned last week, the only thing is I, I was wondering about the timing, when you would do it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is, uh, I think, the vital import. Uh, how you time it, whether you think should be done the first of the week, or whether you think it should be done the middle or the last, or whether you think there should be some preliminary conversation, and, and uh, were you going to say very definitely that you were not, he was not in your scheme of thinking, or were you going to tell him who it was, and some of the things that uh, concern me, I think that, uh, that it concerned you, and I was, that's what I was trying to ask. I do some thinking about over the weekend. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, how are you going to approach this on the basis that in this scheme of things of the people you're thinking that you wanted him to know that he was uh, being considered or not considered or what? I thought that I'd have to say that it had been considered, but uh, I, I wouldn't recommend. Here's what I thought I would say. Uh, I watched this development at San Francisco and very carefully since then. Yeah. And uh, uh, I see now that Mr. Wallace is out of the race. Uh, there's a good deal of conversation about uh, various people, and some of them's friends are getting active uh, on the vice presidential question. And I think it's pretty basic that the president uh, should have uh, the person that he personally feels uh, the uh, greatest rapport with and that he feels can be of the most value and that he feels that uh, he would like to have on the ticket. Now, in the light of what has happened at San Francisco and their nomination and who they've selected their running mate and the fact that the Middle West is going to be uh, our uh, battleground, and view of the fact you're in my cabinet, and there's a good deal of activity on your behalf uh, uh, in uh, some of these states, I thought I owed it to you to be frank with you and say to you that I don't think that this is the year for you to go for the number two spot. And therefore, I have concluded that I would not recommend that. I would be glad to uh, have any uh, your views and, and carefully consider them on uh, uh, what uh, you, who you think uh, uh, might be, and I'd like you to know that I think you have a future in the party and a bright one, and I would be glad to uh, seriously consider uh, uh, working with you and any particular assignment that would interest you. And uh, I think down the road that you uh, uh, would have a, a very good opportunity and very bright future, and I would be uh, inclined to uh, uh, help you with it as much as I could. But uh, I think that uh, because you're in my cabinet, because if I say nothing, uh, your people may misinterpret it, that I think I ought to tell you now before we get divided and before uh, you get up a lot of steam, that I don't think in the light of their nominees and uh, their platform and the thing that will confront the Democrats this year, that this is your year for the number two spot. Well, I think it's good, but I, I'd also say that I, I've canvassed with, you know, different people. Yeah. And they are of the opinion also that yeah. after the San Francisco thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do uh, uh, also would uh, talk about unity. We have to have unity in order to win. I wouldn't, you know, make it any different. 
divided. I just say that what we're working for, what I've been working for, is unity here. Yeah. And going into this Atlantic City Convention with the forces of the Democratic Party, not similar to what happened on the West Coast, but united 100%. And this is what I'm working to, and that's why I, I uh, felt I owed it to you and your friends and everyone else to, to talk to you this way. So we wouldn't have any, uh, we'd have the greatest So I thought so. I was just kind of waiting. I thought I might even do it today, but I guess he's out of town. I was just kind of waiting until I heard yeah. y'all's conversation because I felt I felt he'd raise the question with you, and and uh, uh, I wanted to kind of get your reaction. And uh, uh, I had uh, I have talked to uh, I don't want to say this publicly, but I have talked to myself or through uh, my intermediaries to about 15 governors in the South and the border states. Uh, without exception, every one of them say that uh, there would be no hope if we went to his route, that, that they just no, don't even look to them, including my home state, just say we can't, uh, we can't carry that. Uh, we have great problems as it is, yeah. and uh, we just uh, can't do it. Yesterday, uh, we had the Midwest governors in, and that included uh, Wisconsin and uh, Iowa, and uh, uh, North Dakota and Minnesota. And uh, uh, one of my assistants sat down and visited with them afterwards. And uh, uh, there was not uh, a single one that felt that I shouldn't uh, uh, have my own running mate and not a single one that uh, advocated uh, this his route. Now, uh, Lawrence says that his people will be for whoever I want, although they're starting a little rump movement up there with a disgruntled auto workers organization man who tried to throw Ruther out at the last convention, and uh, they're trying to get 100,000 signatures for the Kennedy name. And uh, uh, But Lawrence says that uh, they pay no attention to him, and he's an extremist, but I think that's a bad thing to be starting. Uh, and by your cabinet, start doing it. If one of your, if your council starts doing that way to you, that you take in on your ticket, why, pretty soon uh, they can they can discredit you. Yeah, I think you're right there. And uh, uh, what what reaction did you get from him? Do you think that uh, does he feel he ought to have it? Does he feel that he's entitled to it? Does he feel he wants to fight for it, or what? Well, not not the latter. I kept him uh, trying to uh, press that after all, as long as I've been attending the convention, and probably long before I attended, it's always been the decision of the president to select his running mate. Yeah. So this is fundamentally so I agree with that. Well, I said, uh, that's why I think you should sit down and talk to him and find out what he's thinking about. I said, I don't know. Uh, neither does anyone else. That's the decision the president makes himself, and it's made the same way after over and listen to a lot of people, and I said it may, would, would be made the same way it was made in 60 and 8 and 56 and 52 and 48, as long as I can go back and probably before that. If this is the, uh, the tradition and this is the position, then there must be a conversation between you and the, and the president. Well, he, he agreed with that, and the, uh, after all this is a did, uh, did you leave the impression with him or make it clear that uh, your group would be with the, uh, for the president selecting his man? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. He knows that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They keep putting out, you know, about all the nor well, keep, uh, northern leaders. Yeah, well, they keep uh, saying a lot of things, but they actually, and honestly, he, and he understands this thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And he's quite uh, reconciled to the fact that the uh, which is, everyone knows, you don't have to be told of it. After all, it is a decision that the president makes itself. Sure you've got a man, not only as a candidate, but 
you also got a man that's in the uh, number two spot in your entire setup. Did he give you any indication that he uh, uh, knew of the trend of my thinking? He didn't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't say that. He, he kept saying, you know, how everyone was depending upon some of the fellows that speak out, including myself. I said, well, after all, uh, you don't know what speaks out in a thing like this that has uh, any real understanding or experience in this field. This is a decision. We all await the word of the president. And after he I said, we, we hope that we will get a good man. We hope and we all strive. And we're, we're asked to give whatever suggestions. But I said, after all, this is something that the president does himself. And that I said, that's the way it should be. Thank you, Dick. Now, two things I want to mention to you. I, uh, I got to, these governors were in raising hell about everything going to the east into California. I don't want to make that an issue uh, for obvious reasons. California is a pretty vital and big state, and we don't want we don't want to we don't want to pick at anybody. But I did ask uh, I did ask uh, McNamara to uh, uh, carry through on the whole area, just as I did in uh, in uh, your city. And uh, I had him come over and meet with them and ask him to set up a study group and let's try to uh, uh, have uh, some presentations made to him and make them pretty conscious uh, of the need of uh, looking at every section of the country and using all of our resources that we'll need in case of an emergency. So he's going to do that now, and I think you ought to get your best planners and some of your industrial people, uh, your companies, Motorola, General Electric, or whoever's out there, and maybe get some of the biggest ones that have defense orders and have your planning group talk to them and have them kind of present uh, 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 some suggestions to him uh, what what they have available and what they could do and uh, what fields they could do it. And uh, I'll... Uh, I'll have uh, uh, you come down here and see him at a lunch, or I'll have him come out there and see some of your people, or I'll do any way you want to handle it. Well, very good, and, and we appreciate it very much. In addition, <laughs> I, I do hope you'd consider putting Kerner on in a place of prominence in the national uh, convention, especially when they gave so much time to Percy. Yeah, We, yeah. we would be, uh, uh -huh. it looked as though we were... Uh -huh being ignored, and if this is a typical state of Illinois, then we're going we're gonna to have to try to get Kerner on there. Uh -huh. And I, I wish you to think about that and help us, because uh -huh. it would be nice if he would play a prominent part in the whole thing. Uh -huh. All right, we'll it help us. All right, that's good. Uh, now, the second thing, Dick, I don't know what uh, your plans are, but I wish that you'd have your best man that has a problem with you, with your young people and with your unemployed. Talk to Shriver. Well, they've been down there, and we got, uh, we're got we moving, and all we need is the, you know, the wherewithal to do it. I'd like the day I sign the act, if we, we pass it in the Senate, and we'll have a fight in the House, but we think we'll pass it next week there, and we, so. we hope without going to a conference. Yeah. Then uh, uh, I would like to sign it, and the next day make a rather substantial allocation and three or four uh, uh, real... Uh, difficult spots, and I'd, I'd like for one of them to be in Chicago. Oh, so, wonderful. So, I think uh, we'd appreciate it very much. And I think that you, you could attach yourself uh, pretty well to your great interest in young people, and I'd uh, I'd look at the number of young ones that would be eligible for this that are uh, unemployed there, and I'd have my people, uh, welfare, whoever does it, to contact Shriver's people and say, now, we want to be the first in the United States. And uh, we want a substantial camps and substantial work projects and so forth. And uh, uh, then we ought to try to at least get get a lot of stuff going by November. I think this would be wonderful. And, and we'd like to work 100%. Well, you get your man that handles the uh, young well, people. I just want to say this. The, the Daily family watched you yesterday. We thought it was excellent. Well, thank you. The way you handled yourself, it was just marvelous. And every bit of great president and our leader. We really, uh, really enjoyed and appreciated the masterful way and the uh, fine and high-class way in which you handle that whole situation. Well, you're wonderful. Uh, Mr. Rayburn's gone now. I'm going to lean on you, Dick. I hope I don't get to uh, wear you out. You don't wear me out. Okay. We meet together, and I'm sure that we'll do a great job. I'll, in this country. I'll, I'll, I'll,
I'll try. Okay, then.